76ers. They've won each of their games since Joel returned to the lineup. It's been a positive sign when both he and Tyrese Maxey have been on the court this season. Because look at that. The pair have played in just 34 games together, but Philly has won 27 of them. That gives them a win percentage that would be the best in the NBA if it was over an 82-game span. It's not. We know that. But, Perk, I'll ask you what Joel and B just asked. He said, imagine, what can these guys do if they are like this? What can they be? What can they do? They can actually win an NBA championship in the near future. I'm not talking about now in this year, but okay. in the near future, maybe next year. Because let's be honest, when Joel Embiid is healthy, Tyrese Maxey is healthy, they're one of the better duos in the league. It's not one other duo I would take over them, probably Jokic and Murray. But when they're mastering the two-man game like they did last night, you know, whether it's dribble handoffs, the pick and pop action, the pick and roll action, yep. and you get this all NBA Tyrese Maxey that we witnessed last night, Absolutely, their ceiling in the near future is winning the championship together. I appreciate the positivity for the future near and far. It's something that my therapist says I need to work on, but I, I'm focusing oh, on okay. the now. We're going there. I always focus on the now, okay. Zach. That's my problem. So for this season, for Tyrese Maxey, for Joel Embiid, can this, they lead the Sixers to their first conference finals in two decades? Yes, they can. What a 72 hours for Philadelphia. Joel Embiid comes back. They beat the Thunder. The Nets do them a solid by beating the Pacers, who they're trying to catch for number six. Then they beat the Heat, who they're trying to catch for number six and number seven. If they go 5-0 and oh, and it's in play, look at their schedule. It's in play. They might actually get up to number six. If they get up to number six, unless Milwaukee keeps falling apart, they could get Cleveland, who's 11-15 and 15 in their last 26 games. The Knicks, who just lost Julius Randle for the season. The Magic, who are feisty and tough but inexperienced and can't score. The roadmap is there. What a late season plot twist it would be if Joel Embiid came back after this free fall from like second to eighth and they're all of a sudden getting healthier, getting better, and giving Milwaukee a run in the second round. Let's go. Uh, Zach? Yeah. Keep Sorry. a cool booty. Okay. Keep a cool booty. I'm not going to jump. Listen, I, I'm not going to jump the gun like that right now for the simple fact. I watched that game last night, and what I saw from Joel Embiid, listen, he's going to get buckets, right? If he stay in the two-man game, he's going to score on the perimeter with his face up and his midi. But when I saw him last night, right now, since he come back from injury and it's expected, he has been playing below the rim, right? He's not being able to elevate dunk on people, whatever the case may be. So he's playing at about probably 75 to 80 percent. And when you think about the matchups in order for the road for him to get to the conference finals, he's going to have to go against the likes of a Giannis Antetokounmpo or yep. maybe a Boston Celtics. And I just don't see them beating that, those particular teams to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm not saying he can't do it in the near future, but not now. Well, right now, though, I wouldn't have said a couple of weeks ago that Philadelphia could be the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference, and now that's the direction they're trending. It was the first ever career 35-point, 10-assist game for Tyrese Maxey, Kelly Oubre looking like a bona fide third Ooh. option for them. They could be a very scary mm -hmm. team that I wonder, Perk, if you look at your 07-08 Celtics, what happened in the first round against the Hawks? We went seven games. Right. I wonder if even a feisty Philadelphia team, if that same kind of story could play out in the first round. Wait a second. I'm supposed to drink every time the 2008 Celtics are brought up around <laughs> Perk. I don't have a drink. You can't do that. We're going to get you one in a couple of minutes. Don't worry about that. But, but before we, we, we would need to get you a drink if we were down in Miami as well. That is the, the, the cultural custom down, down in Miami. And you've said you want to wait until we the postseason. That's when you judge the Miami Heat. Are you still waiting, or are you ready to, to make any judgments yet? We're all still waiting. You watched the last six minutes of that game? Their offense just went completely haywire, totally off the rails. And it's if they keep playing this play-in game every year, one of these years they're going to get burned. They almost got burned last year when they lost to the Hawks and then almost lost to the Bulls. This is a very dangerous game. Their crunch time offense has been abysmal all season. Their overall offense is bottom 10. And where's Jimmy Butler? Mm. Like... He's talking about how it's Jimmy Butler time. He's going to change it to the best player of the world. We know he can do it. Mm. He's done it. I have nothing but respect for Jimmy Butler. He's amazing. His last six or seven games are like 15 points, 17 points. Like the Heat can't score enough to win with Jimmy Butler just kind of being good but not great. And where's Tyler Hero? I, it seemed like every time we get to this point, he's injured. I'm not questioning the, le the legitimacy of his injury. I'm just saying, like, you know, sure. we, we – we, 
give AD and Kawhi Leonard some flack for, you know, missing games. That same energy well, got to be kept towards Tyler Hill. Do you believe we're only nine days away from the end of the regular season? Yeah, well, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let's go coast to coast. Get to the meat and potatoes. We're going to start in the Mecca. That's where the Knicks' 21-point comeback match, their largest comeback win of the season. Brunson Hart and Vincenzo combined to score or assist on 99 points. So shout out the Nova Knicks. Perk Brunson, another great game. Should he get more MVP love? Hell yeah, because he's doing more with less in the uh, for his number four in the league in scoring. I mean, they're half a game from being out of the third spot in the Eastern Conference. Yes, big body Brunson should get more MVP. Left. And OG's been upgraded to questionable tonight. All right, sticking in the West, the Mavs improved to 12-2 and two in their last 14 games, the best record in the NBA since March 7th. Luka, Kyrie, they've each scored 25 or more in the same game for the 23rd time this season. Woo. Zach, Dallas looking like a whole different team. What has impressed you the most? It's the defense and the center position. We know they can score. Luka and Kyrie are incredibly dynamic. Their chemistry is awesome, but what they're getting from Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively, although he's been injured, top-notch center play. Changed now, the game. really sticking in the West. I think my geography is all messed up. The Clippers, they hosted the defending champs last night across the street in Crypto.com Arena. Michael Porter Jr., he wanted to be called for a foul on that one as he collides with Zubots. But the Clippers come down with the ball. Porter Jr. still looks like he's arguing a little bit. Playing some defense there. He's fouled under the basket, but Michael Malone is livid here, Zach. Yeah, you could tell he was going to get tossed when you're out on the court like that, and you don't. He was ready. Mike was ready to get run in this one. And he got run. He got his money's worth. James Harden was ready, yeah, too. Yeah, James Harden showed him the door. Do one of these, you got it. Yep. I, Michael Malone ejected from the game, but it continued. Big block there. The Denver Nuggets getting out in transition. They led by as many as 17 points in this one, Zach. Early they led, they were rolling, and credit to the Clippers, James Harden had a rough start. The, the, the groans were coming from the crowd, and he fought back, and Zoo fought back too, and they played a tough tough game. They needed this one. Huge game for Zubots, 14 points, 15 rebounds, but Nikola Jokic, he is undeniable. And, and he had to work for that shot. That's how great he is. Coming off of pin downs, I mean, and that one team all white body. And then... Final seconds. We've seen Nikola Jokic make this before. I thought it was going in. I, I did too. I, from my seat at the game, it looked like that's the Warriors shot again. 36 points, 17 rebounds, 10 assists, but the Clippers get the win, 102-100. So this is where the West bracket looks entering Friday, right? The Nuggets lost. That drops them to the second seed. They're a half game back of the Timberwolves. But, ooh, look at that 4-5 matchup, Kendrick. The Clippers, the Mavs, those teams have met in the playoffs, remember, back in 2020, 2021. So if the season ended today, mm. that means the Clippers, they would host the Mavericks in the first round of the playoffs. We know how Luka does against the Clippers, right? So please, please Kendrick, keep your belt on today. Yeah. But in all seriousness, who do you think is more dangerous in the West, the Mavs or the Clippers? Now, I know I did a big list yesterday yes. of my title contenders, yes. and the Clippers were number five. That's before I heard the news of Kawhi Leonard. That's alarming. Right, and when you think about the Clippers and them having to get through a tough Western Conference or a matchup against the Dallas Mavericks, you need Kawhi Leonard because just as much as Luka has been taking off his belt and giving the Clippers a spanking, Ka Kawhi Leonard in the postseason has been doing the same. So without really knowing the the certainty when it comes to Kawhi knee, I'm going with the Dallas Mavericks. I don't I don't know any other team that's really been playing better basketball all around than the Dallas Mavericks led by Kyrie and Luka. And I've said this time and time again, Luka, outside of Jokic, Luka is the most dangerous player in the Western Conference. He's top three, in my opinion, in MVP conversations. I love the additions of P.J. Washington and uh, Gafford at the trade deadline. They've been doing wonders. This team is clicking on all cylinders. This is a Frazier Ali level trilogy between these two. And it all really might come down to Kawhi. Because the Clippers don't get out of that series in 2021 without Kawhi going into Superman mode and being the best player in the last three or four games of that series after Luka caught fire and stayed on fire for the whole thing. If this actually comes to pass, oh my God. I mean, this is a get your popcorn ready. Oh, even, yes. even among the West this, series, which are all going to be good, this is the main event. Both teams have made trades this season to go all in. The Clippers have been all in for five years waiting, waiting to get to the finals. This is 
It, Who's going to win? I don't know, man. I got to see Kawhi. It will be a first-round matchup like we saw last year with the Sacramento Kings and Golden State. Mm. That's how strong it would be if Kawhi is playing. Without Kawhi playing, I have Dallas in five. Well, I will say this, you. though. Last night's win it probably helped keep the Clippers out of the play-in tournament, certainly, but could help keep them all the way up in fourth. And having that home court through that first round. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but people, like, when you walk in Crypto.com Arena, you don't really feel that type of energy when you're the opponent. I'm just saying, I'm just keeping it real. Sorry. So the home the home team could not get a win the last <laughs> time they played in the playoffs. The road teams just killed it. So. And Luka cooks the Clippers. I mean, he averages 33 a game <laughs> against them. You have to I'm keep getting, that I'm getting nervous consider. already. I'm, I not know. Ready. I'm not ready for this yet. <laughs> Come on, five. It's NBA on the